right, today we're gonna talk about how would I build a website on $50,000? Uh, we did a previous one on this, which was how would I build a website on $100? So we got a little bit more budget this time. Uh, if you wanna see that one, check it out on our YouTube channel. But, all right, so let's start with how I've broken down the cost of where I think you're probably gonna spend your money roughly on a $50,000 website. So this makes the assumption that you're not able to do any of the more technical elements of building a site. So what I've got in the outsource first in-house bucket is as follows. So outsourcing is going to be your website, your SEO, your website SEO and content strategy. So like, what are you going to put on your site? Uh, what pages do you need on your site? Um, this is going to incorporate sitemap. It's going to be what do you, the keyword research that defines what features, service pages you need on the site, where you might need some hub pages, um, and also, uh, also fleshing out uh, what you would need to do and once you know what you want to rank for for like a features page, it would define out what are all the elements that need on that page in order for it to rank. So it kind of covers all of the, called a paint by number for a copywriter to say, here's what you need to write about if you want to rank, here's what you have a chance to rank for, so here's what you should do on the site. From that point, copywriting should be done in-house. We're talking about mostly things related to your product, so no real technical expertise needed, more uh, along the lines of writing like sales copy, which uh, if it's just a CEO there, obviously the CEO should be able to write that. They know their product better than anyone. They should know their audience better than anyone. Um, likely, if we're talking about a $50,000 site, there's probably some sort of marketing or salesperson in play uh, that's also able to handle that piece of it. Uh, from there, you've got your copy, you've got your strategy, you know what the sitemap's going to look like, uh, and you start looking at wireframing. And all uh, the wireframing is going to be is like what is going to be needed on the page. And so this wouldn't be true wireframes, like you know building out uh, high fidelity mockups, but instead uh, I would put this more in the framework of like comps so saying like all right we like this style we know we want an faq here we know we want a header here we know we kind of want uh for this one we're going to talk about features so here's a couple feature sections we like so this is really defining out it's kind of like pre-wireframe uh comps and feeding that over to having that all prepped up for a designer so they're not doing that legwork all right so here's a way i like to break down where i think there's some cost savings on the design side of things which is Assuming you're not doing a full rebrand, uh, because that's going to get outside of uh, what you can afford here with 50,000, is taking existing logo, existing color scheme you have, but you need to freshen up and you need to have kind of thematically how's the website gonna look. So what fonts, what's the styling, are you using uh, like just background imagery, are you using like symbols on the page, things like that. So, uh, you know, we're five tool, this is exactly what we did. We actually paid a designer for some of the elements on this site. Actually, this entire uh, homepage, we paid a uh, a higher end designer to do, um, so that we had all the elements that we would want to use across the rest of the site. And so, this is where the real creativity comes in. And so, rather than paying someone to do the entire site, which would have been prohibitively expensive for us, we just had them design the homepage. That way, we just had all the elements in Figma files that we could hand over to a production designer and be like, make sure you incorporate this as you design the rest of the pages, right? And so from there, a production designer doesn't have to come up with like creative backgrounds and like how's it going to look and like, and we're able to reuse some of these modules and things like that. So there's some creative ways in which this site was, was done by using that. And then as you can see, if you like go into services, obviously leveraging some of uh, the similar stuff with cards um, that were used previously so uh, yeah, just a creative way to cut down on the cost of the design. All right, so that covers our establishing brand elements and our design production. Uh, and then last would be development, which is by far gonna be your biggest cost. Uh, I would definitely want a developer who's vetted, who's not going to just use an out of the box like Divi Builder or Beaver Builder or like one of these block builders, but instead, uh, custom code to a certain degree and you're just gonna have to the way you're gonna keep this in scope is you're going to use more of the elements repetitively and so what I mean by that is you can see this is the same as this all this is just flipped 
it's the same as this it's just flipped and then these three acrosses are used multiple places on the site so we're reusing components over and over and over and just pairing them a little differently again it's right here again um, and if you were to go uh, into any of like the home page you can see again we're using these cards very similar same iconography um, it's and also using cards uh, on this side as well so it's utilizing again this will jump over um, a lot of the different uh, I should say the same modules across the site last is project management it's always good to just budget that in um, because you're gonna want someone managing this project to make sure that it finishes on time you could PM it, you could pull this cost out, get it done for 43.5. You're just gonna have to stay on top of it and make sure things are moving uh, appropriately. But if you've never built a website and don't have that techni technical knowledge, it's gonna be really hard for you to PM your own project here. So likely you'd have uh, an agency developing it that would be working with the designer and they would be PMing it. So they would have PM on staff to handle design and getting this thing out the door for you on time. So that is how I would build a website on a 50,000 budget. The one thing to just add in here is like what pages would you actually need on the site? I think that's an important consideration here. Homepage, obviously, a features page is gonna be absolute features or services, kind of whatever, however you break down your company. Uh, so if you are a, a CRM software, you might have something for uh, emailing, for uh, record retention, customer records, uh, something for a uh, page for like automations. Uh, these are all like different feature sets, right? And like you're going to want a page for each of those. Uh, a way you could cut is just having it all on uh, like a platform page where you could list them out. And that just sets you up to scale when you're ready, if, when, you know, when you have the money to build out some of those specific feature pages. You just link from that platform page down to those. You're obviously going to need uh, a... This would be a lot like what I'm talking about with like a uh, like a product feature page, right? Where you, some good uh, good layouts for talking about like feature benefits, uh, where you can have some screenshots, things like that. And then the other piece would be you need a way to convert. So you got to have. Uh, I don't love this as far as a conversion page, uh, as far as like a form. I want a bunch of copy. Like there's a bunch of wasted real estate here. But ultimately, you've can end up with a page where um, you get them to your homepage, you show them what your product's about, and you convert it. Those are the three main that you need. Having a blog or a resources center is gonna be kind of the next nice to have. About page is a nice to have. Um, those are gonna be the big ones that need to be covered uh, on your website. And from there, you've set yourself up to be able to scale this thing out. All right, that covers it.